Hello there. Sorry, I was talking to Ron and getting caught up on some stuff. I wish that wasn't so bright behind me. I can't help it. That's all right. It, it, let me go ahead and continue this. So this today, for whatever reason, like I had about pretty much right in a row about five different pastors to reach out and to um, chat with me about some things, and then you know ask for prayer, ask for, ask me different things, and we began to to talk and to share and, and to speak into their lives. And so I, I already felt, Charlene, thank you for what you're doing. I know that you'll, you'll fix your end here in a little bit, but um, I wanted to go ahead and get started because there's so much that's happening in the spirit. And I want to kind of use tonight to, um, to get our thoughts and our hearts on the same page. Because the enemy is at war with us, probably today more than I've ever felt. Have, do y'all feel this war <laughs> that's happening? Um, and before I get started, I missed you guys last Monday night. I was on an airplane, and so I could not do this. And um, plus, I had been ministering at a church that weekend. And so, again, let me remind you, if for whatever reason... I'm not on here on a Monday night. We try to let people know what we're doing, when we're doing it on our Facebook page. But if you come on here and you forget, you haven't checked Facebook and there's no one here, it's because I can't be, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to be right here on Monday nights. These Monday nights will be different. They're a lot kind of my meetings. I don't know how else to operate other than just being led by the prophetic being led by what's what the Lord is speaking to me in my spirit. I don't claim to be a Bible teacher. Um, my husband works in the office of teacher. I don't claim to have that gift. But what I do feel the need to do on these Monday nights is to take and share with you uh, what the Lord is speaking to me as a, as a prophet and then try to dissect it and try to um, um, uh, Kim you can't hear I'm getting messages and try to break down what the Lord is saying in the prophetic with finding the scripture to go with that okay uh, we're still having audio problems I have some people Okay, again, I don't know who all is on here. Let me see. Um, if you cannot hear, um, send me a message. You know how to send me a message? Everybody that can hear, I can't see everybody's face. Just a few of you. Oh, okay. Now you can hear. Okay, great. So everybody can hear. Praise God. Okay. Everybody, so everybody's saying they can hear. We were just having some problems. But anyway, what I was saying is that is the purpose of this Monday night. It's not, it's not necessarily for me to get on here and preach, although sometimes I will. It's not necessarily for me to get on here and prophesy to you, although sometimes I will. And sometimes we'll, 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 we'll always pray for you, of course, but mainly it's just to connect, to encourage, because if, if we've ever connected as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to do it now. And we need to use every um, opportunity to do that. I remember uh, a while back, the Lord spoke to me and he said, if you've ever sown a seed, sow it now. And I knew he wasn't just talking about financial seed. Financial seed, yes. There's no greater prophecy, no greater covering over your um, finances than being the steward of what the Bible says for your, for your giving. It is more blessed to give than receive. My daddy always told me, if you ever get in a mess, Ron, give your way out of it. And so we, my husband and I look for opportunities to give. 
but sometimes it's not just limited to our checkbook. We look for all types of ways to give. And uh, we do this every day. My husband right now is downstairs on the telephone and he's working with someone. He's, what is he doing? He's given his time. He's talking. He's, he's ministering to someone, helping them through a struggle that they're having. And so I'm up here giving to you guys. And then when you, you can just keep passing this on. And I don't know why I'm even saying that. Maybe someone is needing a miracle in your finances. And the Lord's saying there's, there's, there's a secret to that success. And that is to give. A lot of you have seen on Facebook. Facebook always notices that your birthday's coming up. My birthday is tomorrow. Can y'all believe it? And um, um, they always offer who, if it's your birthday to, um, I uh, have some people give to a nonprofit of their cho choosing. Well, this comes around every year and I never really pay attention to inviting people to my own um, nonprofit. Harrison Ministries International, if you're unaware, is a nonprofit organization. And so, and the reason it is, is because here really, really soon, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, my husband and I will be establishing a home base here in Indiana. We will uh, be starting a, a church, a discipleship center here. And I'll talk to you a little bit tonight if the Lord leads. But I got to thinking, uh, we're, we're going to be purchasing property and building a building. And so um, that, that donation there that we're taking for my birthday tomorrow, every dime of it, 100% is going to stay in the nonprofit. And it's going to go, to, I'm going to put that offering that's there, whatever it comes to, I'm putting it in the ground. <laughs> you hear my heart? We're going to sow it in the ground. And so we at Harrison Ministries, we are being very good stewards and we're being very diligent and very mindful of the tithes and offerings that comes into us. And we are putting um, all that we can all that we comes in, even including our revivals uh, that we come out, the offerings that come through our revivals, the offerings that come through tidily, we are being very mindful of them, uh, more so than we, we, we usually are. We are very good stewards. That was one of the things that we learned as a couple is the power of giving and the power of stewardship. Because when you learn how to be faithful with your finances, then it builds you courage to be faithful in other things hear my heart being faithful and trusting god with your finances is a platform that will catapult you into believing his word for other things healing peace of mind joy uh, uh revelation it, it 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 literally if you can trust him with what you hold precious to you um you can trust him with a lot of things and so every dime every dime, a hundred percent. When you see it on Facebook, whether it be a dollar, whether it be $500, thousand dollars, whether it be $5, it doesn't matter. It's going into the ground. <laughs> so I'll talk about that in just a minute. Maybe I should talk about it right now, really, really quick. Um, uh, several years ago, we're going to do this really quick. D, I love you, honey. We've been praying for you. We're going to pray. We have, listen, we have, I've had, um, about eight people in my family, my immediate family, sick with COVID. Um, three of them were in the hospital this past week. We we lost we lost one. Um, but you know what? Um, he loved the Lord. He was a pastor. His name was Jimmy Tucker. His wife Kathy and Stephanie were all three in the hospital at the same time. And um, Kathy was. Um, was vented two days ago. We thought we was losing her. We began to go to the Lord in prayer. And um, she, her oxygen has come back up. Uh, but we lost Jimmy. And it's bittersweet because, of course, he is a huge part of our family. And um, it's, I can't really um, believe it, to say the truth. But I refuse to be mournful because I know how much he loved the Lord. And I know that he is beyond excited to be home. 
um, with the rest of our family that has gone over. We continue to pray for Stephanie, his daughter, and his wife, Kathy, that are both in the hospital. Uh, Stephanie was out, and I believe she went back today. And so we're praying for them. Also, some pastor friends of mine in East Texas, uh, COVID has hit their house really strong. I know that Dee has also been uh, bat battling with her health, and I know that there's been people at different churches that have been battling. And um, so we're going to pray also tonight for that. And um, we're being mindful of that. And my, my prayer warriors that are partnered with us as prayer warriors in Harrison Ministries, we, when we get together and we send out prayer, we don't stop until we see the hand of God move. We believe in prayer in this ministry. Prayer changes things. You know, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. Nothing takes place without the power of prayer. Everything started with the open mouth, a, a word. And so uh, we're going to continue to pray for our family. We're going to continue to pray for your family. And we're going to ask the Lord's hand to stretch. We are in a war. And we're not in a war against um, uh, political parties. We're not in a war against those that want to be vaccinated and those that don't. We're not in a war with, with denomination. We are in a war simply against good and evil. That's what we're in a war in. And the way to win this war is to understand um, the scripture and to understand that we win. <laughs> and so that we can... We can be mindful of God's promises, even when we're sick, even when we're afraid, even if you're in the hospital, couple, you are in the hospital watching me. And when you're in the hospital, you, I pray heaven to come into that hospital. You know, when I was praying for my family, it was in the hospital. I didn't, we didn't just pray for them. Me and my team just didn't pray for them. I said, Lord, John G. Lake, that hospital there in East Texas. Oh, I just send heaven down to the whole floor and empty the floor. Well, I pray for one person. Let's pray for everybody in East Texas. Let's pray for everybody around the world that are fighting this nasty virus, this nasty um, disease. You know, the Bible says we have authority over all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That includes COVID-19. The word of God did not change because of this, this virus, it did not change. And so we're gonna, right now, we need to be transformed by the renewal of our mind and we need to understand what the word of God says. Listen, we're gonna pray for these doctors and nurses and these people on the front line, but they can only produce facts for you. They are not gonna be able to tell you truth. You're gonna have to know the truth yourself and the truth in which you know, that is the only thing will free you from your from your sick bed. That's the only thing. Hear me. There is, hear me, hear me. There is absolutely nothing else. On top of those that have been fighting the battle of uh, COVID-19, we have got several people. Listen, my circle ain't that big. My circle, I was talking to my friend Jason Crabb on the phone the other day, and um, he was telling me, he was asking me, is your ministry being bombarded by COVID-19 people need prayer again. And I said, yes. And I told him, I said, Jason, my, my, um, my, my following, so to speak, the people that follow our ministry is not as large as yours. And I, right now we have, we know of four people, four people that did not have COVID-19. They took the vaccine uh, because they thought maybe they should, and they're fighting for their life. And we lost one yesterday, 16 year old boy. Um, he, he lost his life to the vaccine. I'm not telling you this to, to, to sway you either way. That's your decision as an American. That is your right. But you need to seek the Lord. You need to seek the Lord. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That's what the Lord just keeps talking to me about. Now, before we talk about that, I want to go really quickly and share with you again, like I was talking about a lot of people, um, that have donated for my birthday tomorrow to Harrison Ministries International. I've had people to, I've had my husband has said to me, babe, what do you want for your birthday? You know what I told my husband? Donate to Harrison Ministries International for my birthday because there is absolutely nothing, absolutely, there ain't, there ain't nothing that I'm in need of that I want more than to be able to feather 
the gospel and the giftings in my life. A few years back, we're going to do this real quick and we're going to go into the word. A few years back, the Lord began to lay on my heart that uh, to have a discipleship center. Uh, I, even though I preach and I travel and I prophesy and we pray for people and God is merciful and he's been faithful and all that, my heart has been to leadership. My heart has been able to, I'm the crazy woman that looks at a pastor in private and say, have you lost your mind? <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh, I'm, I'm the one that's got the guts to do that. And, um, and they trust me to love them enough to tell them the truth. And I don't know all things. Clear my heart. I don't know all things, but what I do know, I've been set free from, and I'm confident to share that knowledge with other people. And so I've been raised, I have been raised by people in leadership. And so I, I know behind the scenes of that very, 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 very well. And so God has used me with, with having a heart of compassion for those that are trying to carry the gospel. It's very hard to be a minister today. It's very hard. To, to do this today. We are, we are hated and, and, and we are despised. The Bible tells us that because I tell you the truth, you will hate me. And so we can feel that burden and, and you can feel the pressure of the enemy at all the time. It never goes away. And so we, that's why you should pray for your leadership. That's why you should pray for your pastors. You have, should have time set aside, just dedicate. This is a place in which you can give. Come on, somebody. This is what I'm talking about giving. You should set aside time daily or at least weekly, set an alarm on your phone, whatever you got to do. And all you're doing is lifting up your pastor, praying for spirit of protection over the ministry in your, in your house, those kind of things. But anyway, the Lord began to lay on my heart that uh, as I begin to grow and transform myself, uh, I could not preach what I wanted to preach in three nights. And I felt the need that I wanted to grow a people. And so I was sitting in uh, Nacogdoches, Texas with Apostle Gustavo Pice from Bogota, Colombia. Charlene was there. And he didn't know anything in my heart. He didn't know anything. And I remember he, he was at another table even. And he looked over and he came and he brought his plate and he set his plate beside mine. And he, brought, he called my interpreter over because he doesn't speak English. And he told my interpreter to interpret. And he looked at me and he said, Profeta, you're about to get land. Well, that's what the Lord had already spoken to me. And the thing about, I'm talking fast because we got to get through this so I can get to where we're going. So the thing that, that the, the Lord began to deal with me was, was that I knew that the Lord had spoke to me about getting land, but see, I had not told anybody. That's a secret. That, that's something that you need to learn. Sometimes when the Lord speaks to you, you need to hold it within your spirit because once you bring it out, you are, and you invite the enemy to begin to sift. Oh, you hear my heart? Not everything needs to be spoken out loud. Not everything needs to be uh, out there. Now, the only reason I'm telling you as much as I'm telling you right now is because this has been a process that's been developing over the years, and I don't need confirmation any longer. <laughs> I don't need. I don't need to know if I should. I, 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 the Lord has confirmed his word many times over and I know that I'm going to and so I'm, I feel okay to start kind of giving you a little insight on what on what's happening but back then no one knew because I wasn't going to allow the enemy to sift and that's the thing sometimes God will speak to us on something he wants us to do or be a part of and we begin telling everybody and when you tell people your business you're offering their you're, you're opening the door and 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 um, giving room for their opinion and sometimes you get so many opinions, you don't know if you're washing or hanging out. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes when you're seeking the Lord, come on, this is gold, I'm telling you. When you're seeking the Lord on something, you need to seek the Lord, not seek the Lord and everybody on Facebook and everybody at your church and everybody at the coffee shop. You need to seek the Lord. And that is something that the Lord is telling me these last two weeks. And we're going to talk about the seeking of the Lord here in just a minute. But as you're seeking him, you can't, you need to position yourself to not be sifted. See, the enemy can't attack something he's not aware of. Okay. So a lot of times when I'm seeking the Lord, I won't even pray to him in English. I won't even let it come out my mouth. 
Even when I'm by myself, when I'm seeking the Lord about something, sometimes I'm just by myself going, I know in my heart what's written upon the tablets on my heart. I know what's in my spirit. And I know what I'm seeking the Lord for, but I'm not going, I'm not giving way for the enemy to, to sift in any form or fashion. He's not invited to the conversation. The reason why confusion gets and, and re reason why God's plans get held up sometimes is because you've invited too many people to the conversation. And in that you've invited the enemy to the conversation. You see what I'm saying? And so I am really, really, really careful about that. And I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why I keep my circle very tiny. My circle is tiny because all I need is him. All I need is the Lord. All you need is God. You don't need the opinions of confusion. And he's not the author of confusion. And so the prophet said to the apostle said to me, you're going to get land. And I already knew what the Lord had it in my heart because I had spent time seeking him. But I, I remember I said, I, I, I got into his face like this. And I said, apostle, what am I going to do with this land? And I remember he took a bite of his, of his steak and he's chewing. <laughs> I'll never forget this. And in between chews, he looks at me with full confidence. And he said, you're building a discipleship center. Then he said this. He said, 7,000 prophets is going to come up out of that. And I know that that sounds like that. Well, that doesn't include me. I'm not a prophet. But that's the interpret. That was him trying to say something that could be interpreted in English to me. But what he was talking about was there was going to, that was going to be a place in which the teaching and the ministry, the prophetic preaching and the prophetic teaching that was going to come from this place was going to position people to be kingdom minded. Because I was talking to a pastor today and I was telling him this. And I'm going to share this with you. This is what I told him. I said, there's a kingdom being built. I guarantee you. It's either a kingdom to ourselves or it's a kingdom of God. But you're building a kingdom. You are building a kingdom either unto yourself or you are building one unto God. You're kingdom minded. And God is positioning the church. You've hear, heard me say it all the time. There's a church coming up out of a church. We're different. We're separated. We don't fit in anywhere else. That's because we're kingdom minded. But in these last days, God is sinking us together. He's causing us to, um, to assemble ourselves together. He's causing us to come in one mind and one accord. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that assembling myself together means that I need to assemble myself with the church right next door because the church right next door may be, taught, may be preaching a false doctrine. The church my, next, next door may not be filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to be careful what you come in agreement with. You got to be careful what you come in covenant with. Everybody's wanting to get into a building but God's not looking for a building. He's looking for a people. And so I, I assemble myself with, with people. I've assembled myself with, in Nashville, Restoring Hope Church. I've assembled myself in Murchison with Pastor Chris and Lisa Will. I've assembled myself. I've joined myself up with people that, that are going in the same direction as me. That, that, and, and I don't work on this. It, your spirit will bear witness with other people's spirit. And so as time passed by, as time kept going, I knew, I knew that there would come a day that I would need to um, establish a home base. Well, this past weekend, I was on an airplane and it was a two hour ride on this plane. I had a really long, I was in the airport all day long, <laughs> all day all day long and but my my actual plane ride was two hours I was tired I had already preached three nights and prayed for I don't know how many and you know you know you get tired in your body and I decided to just close my eyes and sit back in the plane so I just stayed back had my ear sets on and I just closed my eyes 
As soon as I closed my eyes, I went into the spirit. I went into an open vision. And I began to walk through double glass doors into a foyer. And as I walked into the foyer, there was a gas fireplace in this foyer. I knew it wasn't a house, but there was a gas fireplace. There were windows, tall and skinny, then they almost reached the floor. And I remember going in and I literally walked through this whole entire building that does not exist. It does in the spirit. It does in the kingdom. And so that's what I want to say. There's somebody on here. You need to understand that the promise of the God, yes and amen, and the things that God has shared with you, it's not that they don't exist. They exist in the kingdom. They exist in the spirit. But it takes faith and hope for you to take what's in the spirit and manifest it into the natural. And in this day and hour, you have got to learn to do that. Aunt Beryl, you recognize this pen? <laughs> Looks like Grandpa Edwards' pen. When I was a little girl, I thought this is the neatest pen in the world. My Grandpa Edwards had his pen. <laughs> so I, I keep it. I have it on my desk. So here I am preaching with it. And so, and so that's the secret of right now. We need to learn. We need to learn in the midst of hell, in the midst of sickness and disease, how to take what has been promised to us in the kingdom. It exists. It's there. But we need it to manifest into the natural. You understand what I'm saying? So everything that God has for me, between now and the time I'm taken out off this planet and I go home to be with God, whether it be through rapture or whether it be through the grave, I have this much time to stand in agreement with the yes and amen of what God's word has promised me and what he has showed me, no matter how long it takes to bring, to manifest what he's promised me. And as I get closer to it, let me tell you how I get closer to it. As I decrease, and I don't pray, I'm, I'm not praying for a bigger ministry. I'm not praying for this and that. I'm literally seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, search my heart. Prepare me. And as I grow and transform my personal relationship, my personal intimacy with Jesus, the closer I'm getting. Listen, hear my heart. I've never wanted to pastor a church. Mm-mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I love being an evangelist. And let me tell you why. I can go into a place, slap some people around, and leave. I don't have to put up with people. That's just real. That's the, that's the fun part of evangelism. You can go into a church, do your thing. It don't matter if they love you. It don't matter if they like you. It don't matter what they think of you. You're leaving on a plane. You don't live in that town. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. It's true. Now, I don't, of course, want to leave that pastor in a mess, and I don't want to hurt people and be compassionate, but that's just kind of a funny way of looking at it. But I have, the, what I have grown to and what the Lord has been sharing with me in the word the things that I feel like I want to minister, I can't do in three nights. And there's something in me that's wanting to build a people. There's something in me that's wanting to have a place for pastors um, to, to come here and, and just get filled up and just, just to have a, a time off, just to, just to have a place to a refuge kind of place. Well, anyway, while I, while I was on the airplane, I hadn't talked to my husband but the night that I was to leave, he went into a dream. And I can't go into the whole dream, but he dreamed. And he dreamed that he was driving our F-150, but it had many, many seats in it. Anytime you dream about a vehicle, depending on the vehicle, that is a picture and a shadow of ministry. If you ever dream about a house or a building in different rooms, that, that is uh, prophetically interpreted as you, your spirit, your soul, what's going on in the different parts of you. So he automatically knew that the fact that he was driving this, this truck and there was many, 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 many seats that the Lord was showing him that there's a, a place for him um, in, in ministry of leadership. 
he pulls up to a building that he doesn't know. He doesn't know what the Lord has taken me into a vision of. I walk the whole building. So I get on the phone with him and he says, I'm at the airport on a layover. And he says, Ron, I have had this dream. It's powerful. Now I can't share the whole dream on here. It would take too long, but I'm gonna give you the gist of it. He said, I literally pulled up to this building with these double glass doors. Uh, listen, God is so good. And he said, when I walked in, there was people that are already partners with our ministry, whether it be financial partners, prayer partners, they were already sitting inside. But when I looked out the doors, there was a line of people as far as I can see of families. And I thought, why aren't they coming in? So he goes and opens the door and there was a man, a wife and three of his kids standing there. And the man spoke to him in the dream. And he says, we've been waiting for you to open these doors for years. We've been waiting in this line for years for you to open this door. He turns around, he goes back in there and in the middle of this, uh, of this place, the angel of the Lord is standing and Jesus is standing there. And he tells my husband, he says, quit telling people that you're not going to pastor. Quit telling people that you're not going to, to have a church. He said, you're going to have a church that's going to teach my people how to be a church, how to be the church of Jesus Christ. He basically told him, he said, this should have already been done. And, and, and with a repentful heart, uh, my husband said he was very repentful. And he began to say, Lord, I repent. I repent. Yes, of course. Yes, I say yes to you. And I'm skipping through many things of this dream. Yes, I say yes. And when he said yes to him, there was this golden crown and it began to twirl from the ceiling and it twirled and landed on his head, a twirl, a crown. That crown represent kingship. It represent the, the, the kingdom manifest the sons of God. And when the, the crown landed on his head, a staff landed in my husband's hand. And there's more to the dream. And that confirmed over and over and over and over and over again. So every seed planted into this ministry, the most, as, as much as we can, we got to get where we're going. You know, we got to keep, we're going to keep evangelizing. But everything else, 100% of that, we're going to put it in the ground. And by this time next year, we hope to have a building. My husband and I are going to pastor and bring discipleship and bring, um, make a refuge for other pastors. So we're going to have prophetic weekends. I'm going to continue to travel. I'm going to continue to do what I do right now. That's not changing. But I'm going to give a place for my pastors that I'm in fellowship with and say, you know what? You need a rest. Come here. Let us take care of you. And, and, and it's just going to, that's just, I'm just testifying because see, all of that was not in my imagination and it wasn't just a dream. It's been in the kingdom. It's been in, it's been up here. And now my, by my faith and my hope, my hope, hope is a positive imagination with an expected end. It's going to bring what's in the kingdom manifest it into the natural. Amen. Are you in agreement? All right, I want to go now and I want to um, talk to you a little bit about what the Lord has been speaking to me for probably two weeks. I keep hearing over and over and over, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. I've heard, um, you've heard me say, seek the Lord um, and you'll find him. You've heard me say the, the most amazing thing about seeking the Lord the Bible says, if you seek him, you find him. And so I've even said, y'all know me. <laughs> I've even taken it a step further. And I've said, if you're not finding him, <laughs> you're not seeking him. Because it promises us that we seek him, we find him. But then it kept going deeper. And it was like, seek the Lord while he may be found. We're in a day and an hour of uncertainty. The Lord has showed us the past few years that the spirit of witchcraft was going to increase, but I have also increased my prophets. He has, he has told us, I remember the time when the Lord showed up in my room and I asked him what time it was and he said, it's time to turn. God has been proclaiming through his word and through his prophets 
for the past since 2000 since we turned to 2019 to today and continue and continues to trumpet that we're in a time of of so searching i told you the past two or three weeks i was in the backyard and the lord spoke to me to guard my heart and he was not talking about the chest the muscle in my chest he was talking about guarding my heart and not just not that we don't because we should not just the things i see not just things that I hear, because the things that you hear will affect you. You want to know why the world is in such a, a disarray? You want to know why prejudice is all-time high? You want to know why hate is at all-time high? You want to know why fear, people are operating, living in fear right now? It's because they're not guarding what they're hearing. They're not guarding what they're, what they're reading, what they're seeing. They're trusting what people deem as facts and who knows if, what what character heart is coming from that person what what how do we know what they're saying is fact because on the other side of the board you got someone just as qualified telling you the opposite if you keep your heart if you make decisions based on everything that's going on here you're going to be living your life in a, in a spirit of confusion you're gonna not gonna know what's up or what's down. Like I said earlier, like my grandpa used to say, you don't, you're not gonna know if you're washing or hanging out. That's what he would say. I don't know if I'm washing or hanging out. We don't have time to be um, and tossed. That's the word I'm looking for. We don't have time. I'm gonna be real. I know I am. I know my pastor friends, they, are, they don't have the energy anymore to be tossed. They've gone past this place. I know I've talked, I bet I talked to six pastors today, some longer, some just quickly. And we don't have the energy to be tossed to and fro. God is looking for a church, a full grown church without spot or blemish that is dwelling, that is stable, that is, that is abiding in him through it all he does not change and when we follow him and we get in, we get in, in one mind and one accord with him in pure relationship with him that means if we're mirroring him we're still on that subject and we're in the likeness of him we shouldn't be changing either so if you feel yourself confused broken busted disgusted here there up one day, down another, oppressed, depressed, then you need to look inward. When we, when we start to think, of wonder what the will of God is for our life, the first thing the enemy, or let's forget the enemy, yourself, you want to look at everything around you. You want to look, well, maybe I should fulfill this call. Maybe I should be doing this. And you want to, you want to act upon something because acting upon something, putting your hands to something makes you feel better. But you got to ask yourself this question. Is it making your spirit grow? Is it making your flesh feel satisfied? Because if your flesh is feeling satisfied, you're in trouble. Because your flesh <laughs> never agrees with the word of God. It never will. And so when he kept saying to me, guard your heart, prophetically, there was a depth to what he was saying. And it wasn't just guard your ears, guard your eyes, but he was saying, guard your soul. Guard, not only to take care of the temple, take care of the body, get plenty of rest, drink plenty of water, eat good, do your best. Not only taking care of your spirit by spending time with him, by prayer, by fasting, by studying the word, by going to church, paying your tithes, taking care of your spiritual realm. He's saying, don't forget about the soulless realm. That is the, that is the center of, of, of who we are. It is the place in which I believe connects us so that we can have ourselves lined up with the likeness that he's looking for. My husband and I have talked about this before lots of the times. But I, I go back to the scripture where, where there's a confrontation, so to speak. 
and they're saying, Lord, Lord, we rebuked devils in your name. We did this in your name. And, and the Lord and Jesus says, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. The secret to that scripture is not exactly just what, what, the, what Jesus has said. But it is in the fact that they called him Lord. I know what you believe. And I know the condition of your soul by, by how you identify the father. If you identify the father as Lord only, I catch myself saying, Lord, not because I know any better. It's because it's habit. And he is Lord. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is that thing. But he's also looking for an intimacy. He's looking for a closeness. When my daddy was alive and he was in this house, if Let's, I'll pick on Andrea. She's my cousin. She's listening. If Andrea came in here and called my daddy, daddy, it wouldn't make no sense. She didn't call him daddy. She called him Uncle Ronnie. Or she called him Ronnie. Or some of you may call him Brother Taylor. Because you know who he is and you respect him as a person or you honor him as a minister. But you don't have the intimate relationship that I had with him. I never called him Brother Ronnie. I never called him Brother Taylor. And you could. That was his name. I never called him Ron, Ronnie. I called him Daddy. Why? Because about what I called him, how I called upon him, identified my relationship to him. And so in that scripture, right before the rejection takes place, the key word is Lord, Lord. It's not that they didn't, didn't understand who he was. They, were un, they, they denied how they received him in the intimate parts of their soul. And if we don't know him as Abba, Father, if we don't call upon him as Father, as Abba, if we don't look towards him as our dad, as we are joint heirs to him. We are bought with a full price. He paid a full price for us. If we don't address him in the intimacy and in the condition of our relationship, then we're already missing it. You, he can be Lord. He can be Lord, but he wants to be Father. Do you hear what I'm saying? He can be Lord. He is Lord. He is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. But there is a people that he's saying, I'm Abba. I'm Abba too. And so when he said, guard your heart, I knew there was getting ready to be some soul searching. So I was gone. Listen to me. I was gone for four days. I came home. As soon as I was came home, my brother, my brother, my husband has a large family. I think there's 10 siblings. Well, one of them came in from Oregon. So they all decided, huh, let's go to Jason and Rana's house and have a cookout and let's all get together. I love that idea. And so I had all, <laughs> all the siblings and all the kids at my house. We had a cookout and it was fun. And I just absolutely loved it. I love big family gatherings. And it was a blessing to their family and we took pictures and all this stuff. I stayed up that night, cleaned up my house. Y'all know I ain't gonna go to bed with no house dirty. I'm gonna wake up the next day. I opened my pantry today. I've been gone. We've been grabbing things in and out of the pantry, trying to make these dinners for all these people. Cause we had, it looked, it felt like Thanksgiving here. Honestly, it did. It felt like Thanksgiving. I even had extra tables of food out because there were so many people. When I opened my pantry, my pantry <laughs> looked like a bomb had gone off. I mean, there was bread and sugar and everything was just everywhere. And I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, this is just not going to work. This is not going to work. I can't deal with this. I can't even see what I, I'm missing. 
uh, I don't know what I'm, I'm in need of. I don't listen to me. I'm saying something here. I, it, it's, it's so disarray. I don't know if I have four mustards or no mustard. I mean, it's just everywhere. It, I can't function like this. And so I began, I took everything out, everything. The whole pantry was empty. And I wiped down the cabinets and I began to sweep the floor. And then one item at a time, I put the sugar with the sugar, the corn with the corn, the green beans with the green beans. And I began to put the bread where the bread's supposed to go and, 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 and the protein powders with the protein powder was supposed to, and I began to put everything back. When I put, now take it, I didn't add anything to the pantry and I didn't remove anything from the pantry. I just took what was already there that was looked destroyed and it looks dismantled and unorganized and it looked confused. And I took what was already there and I just, I just replaced it and I put it in its place. I reorganized it. And what, you know what it looked like? I could now see what was available to me. And I could, and it looked like where before I couldn't put another thing in that pantry. That pantry looked like there was no room on any shelves. But when I began to put things where they belong in this pantry, it made room. Somebody needs to hear me. It made room for more to go in. Some of you, you're not receiving to the fullness because inside your heart, your soul, you got all this stuff. You're trying to be spiritual and worry at the same time. You're trying to be, love God, and go to church and be faithful. And at the same time, you got all this, you got COVID-19. And you don't know if you're washing or hanging out. And you're trying your best, but you're actually wearing yourself out. And you're getting tired and you're getting weary. And the Bible says not to grow tired and weary of well-doing. Don't give up. What that means, let me tell you in Texas terms, don't give up and don't stop doing what is right. All you got to do is clean that spirit out, clean your soul, begin to remove things and begin to place things where they belong. Why? So that you know, you can see everything that's there clearly. And there's room enough for the Holy Spirit to continue to minister. Because sometimes he wants to minister, but the shelves of your heart is cluttered and there's no place to put anything. I know that might be a lame example, but while I was cleaning that pantry, I could feel the Holy Spirit begin to chastise me and bring conviction. Don't ever ignore conviction know the difference between conviction and condemnation if you feel condemned as a devil rebuke him but if you feel convicted receive it i remember as i almost got done clean out that pantry i began to weep and i said lord thank you because in this stupid pantry you have showed me myself you have showed me myself. Lord, I thank you for convicting my heart. Because if I'm not, I just lost a family member that we all love and dear. I could be mourning myself. I've had family members, my Aunt Beverly, who is precious to me, who's been a part of my, my raising, had COVID. She's in, I'm not gonna tell you how she is, she'd kill me. But she's not, she's not 50 anymore. And I had cousins. And I had, I had people that I love, my family, sick. And I had all this here. But I began to clean my mind out and straighten things and put them where they belong in its place. You need to put your fears, your concerns, what troubles you in its place. Because you'll see when, it, when it's uncluttered, you'll see everything so plainly. And it, it allows the Holy Spirit to come in and begin to just. And I begin to hear the Lord, seek me, seek me, seek me. And then that scripture came to me, seek me while I still will be found 
That's in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know what that means? We are on a time frame here. Don't lose, don't allow a cluttered closet to take you away from a precious moment that you could be missing with him. I want to share with you another thing. In this time, I don't seek or study Hebrew in any way or their calendar or anything like that. I think, I think it's real. I think it's cool, but I, that's not ever been my gift. This is the second time that the Lord has spoken to me a word. And it was right on with um, the Hebrew calendar. And it blew my mind because I know me and I knew I didn't know that. But the Lord keeps saying, seek me, seek me, seek me. There is this, I wish I would have got her name. Um, she's on YouTube. I don't know if she's on Facebook. She's on YouTube. And next time, maybe I can, I'll remember to get her name. But she she studies the Hebrew and she studies Hebrew calendar. And the reason why I, I can't catch her from time to time and I listen is because she, she explains it in a way that is, a child can understand. And I love that about her. And, uh, but what caught my attention and I, I found the video again today and I wrote some things down to share with you guys tonight. This is not my teaching. This is not my study. And this is another person's study, but I wrote some things down because I thought, oh, gosh, I didn't know this. And yet here it is, which just confirms just how strong the prophetic is. It really blessed my heart because the Lord was speaking to me something, but not everything that he speaks to me. Do I understand the fullness revelation to a place? But then he'll position me because I'm seeking him. He'll position me to see something or to hear something, excuse me, <coughs> that will continue to, to minister to me. I want to say this before I read to you what she, what she was saying. Hold on. Remember when I said, remember I said, when the Lord begins to use and speak through his prophets, the spirit, the spirit, the prophets of Baal come out the same time. So anytime there's a, the prophet of the Lord is speaking truth, there's always a false prophet right there. There's always, because the enemy always wants to come in and kill, steal and destroy. Okay. Well, I, right now, it, I, I just had to laugh because I was like, are you kidding me right now? But as the Lord began to speak to me, the importance of revelation and really paying attention to my soulless realm and seeking him and over and over and over right now on social media and right now on different um, platforms, I'll just say different platforms. These, there are people, psychiatrists, um, um, new age People, I don't know their titles all of them, but they are saying how we need to address our souls. I thought, you stupid devil. <laughs> but at the same time, I thought, why do all of a sudden are they saying that? You want to know why? Because that's what the Lord is saying. And they're coming in to do a new age study on your soul to bring confusion. That's why we got to know the word of God for ourselves. Because see there, the enemy is not a creator. He can't create something. So he heard some of this trumpet being blown from the prophets. He thought, man, it's time. I'll, I'll get my new age people. I'll get these people over here to start kind of uh, bringing uh, scientific facts about your soul. Listen, I don't care about scientific facts about my soul. I want to know what the word of God says. Okay, so going back to the Hebrew calendar, here's what's cool. I've lost my mind. Today, August the 9th, today is the first day of the month, and I hope I pronounced this right. It's Yule. It's spelled E-L-U-L, -L. and I probably just said that wrong. 
It's on the Hebrew calendar. Here's what's cool. What have we been studying about all this, all these few weeks on Monday nights? The Lord said to guard your heart. The Lord said, be mindful of the heart. I told you on two different Monday nights that the number 12 is significant in the word of God, that you can go to any chapter in 12. Number 12 in Hebrew means govern your mental. Govern your mental. That's what number 12 means. We went back to Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourself, a, your, your body, a living sacrifice. Remember, we went by how to present our body living sacrifices, and I went through these things. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be you renewed by, the, by your mind. And then I went to Revelations 12. We talked about the woman in the vision. And the Bible, the woman in the vision there, that woman means to be betrothed, one to be married. To be married is to be the bride. To be the bride is to be the church without spot and without blemish. Y'all got my heart? And upon her head was a crown of 12, okay? And so I, I talked about this number 12. 12 means govern the mental. Govern your heart. We talked about where the scripture says, let not your heart be troubled. Or this is what it means. Do not allow your soul, your, your mind, to be troubled, to be broken. Remember, we talked about 12. This today is the first day of, am I saying this right? Eula, Eula, it's E-L-U-L. -L. Eula is number 12. I'm not making this up. Y'all should have seen me. Like I had myself a little hallelujah hoedown. It is the 12th month of the Jewish calendar. We're in it right now. This just confirmed. It's even confirmed in the Jewish calendar that the Lord is saying, govern what you're in your mind, govern your heart. It is the final month of the Jewish calendar. Now for us, it's the sixth month, but six and six is 12, right? This month connects, now hear me, this month starting today, this month connects the past year with the coming year, okay? It's a time of reflection on where we are, where we, where, where we are to stand and where we should be going. Now, how do you know where you're going if you don't have a clue what's going on with your today, right? So this is a month. Remember I said I, I was in front of my, my pantry and the, I began to feel the conviction, the chastisement of the Lord. The Bible says he chastises who he loveth. And I didn't see it as, as, as a condemnation. It was a conviction. A conviction pulls you into drawing. The Bible says if we draw not unto him, he will draw not unto us. Come on, I can't even make all this up. So in this month, this month of Yule, which is the 12th month, 12 meaning govern the mind, guarding the heart. This is the month of three things, ready? We are to be mindful of repentance because without repentance, we're lost. I'm sorry. Without repentance, you are lost. Repentance, never be ashamed of, of, of repentance. Repentance takes you back to the place in which you were paid in full. And to be paid in full, the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ, that the payment that he paid, the full price, happened because the father, Abba, said he loved the world so much he gave. That goes back all the way to stewardship. That's the power of your gift. That goes back to what, how we started this video. The Bible says, for the father loved the world so much, he gave. What did he give? He gave his best. What was his best? His only begotten son. Why the son? Because the son, Jesus would not be a son if there wasn't an Abba. Did you hear what I said? We call him the son because God was the father. 
That is, that is the power of intimacy, of relationship. God didn't give from something that didn't mean, he could have gave, he could have gave us anything, but he gave us part of himself. He gave his only begotten. He gave from himself, his son to us. That when he, Jesus shed his blood, that doesn't, the cross does not stand for salvation. It stands for salvation, deliverance, and healing. The cross is for repentance, salvation, which is the same, healing, and for deliverance. You're sick in your body, govern your mind. Renew your mind. This is the, the first day of the 12. Go back and take authority and tell your body to line up because you are paid in full. The blood of Jesus didn't only save you, it healed you and it delivers you. Y'all gonna get me preaching on that. We all think it's just for salvation. Why? He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He don't start something and not finish it. It's for that cross paid for everything in full. Nothing is left over. There's no change. It's in full. So this month, the month of Yule, that means 12. 12 meaning governing of your mind, the guarding of your heart, your heart being your soul is the month of repentance. It's also the month of mercy. It's the month of forgiveness. Not only are we to forgive others, but we need to understand that we ourselves have been forgiven. If you're holding on to something, you know if you are or not. A grudge, holding on to something that hurt you or somebody who's hurt you, that's like cancer in your body. We don't, we don't have, you don't have enough time. You need to forgive. You need to show mercy. You need to be Jesus to somebody. The Song of Solomon, in chapter six, verse three, says this. This reminds me of how, what we've been talking about, how I said that Jesus, when we stand before him, he wants to see himself. I told you the scripture and broke it down. It says to behold, to look upon and to be looked at, to behold him. That, but Song of Solomon chapter six, verse three says, I am to my beloved and my beloved is to me. You see that? I am to my beloved and my beloved is to me. But Yule, E-L-U-L, -L, the month that starts right now, today, it means this, the king is in the field. And let me, let me, this is what I read about this. When the, the king would stay in, the, in his throne and in order to visit the king, like if you were going to visit King David, and I've been at David's kingdom, it's 12 acres. <laughs> you think David's kingdom is like hundreds and it's 12 acres. But to, to, back in the day, to visit the king, you'd have to have an appointment. You'd have, even if you was to go to Buckingham Palace, you can't just walk on up in Buckingham Palace to, to visit the queen. You would have to have an appointment. There's rules to visiting her. You would have to be dressed a certain way. You can't go up in there with your pajamas. You can't go up in there with you would, what, even what you would wear in Walmart. There's rules. You can't even, you gotta, you, there's rules. You even have to learn how to curtsy. You have to learn how to approach her. Now, once you know how, and this is just a human person. You have to learn how to approach her. You got to know what to say, what not to say, and how to say all that. There's rules. There's, there's traditions, a man, when you're, when you're visiting royalty. So all that was there as well. But once a month in this time of the king in the field, the king would leave his palace and he would leave his throne. Somebody better hear me. He would leave his throne and he would set up a tent in the field. He, would, he made himself 
easy access. Now, when Jesus came and the veil was ripped, the Bible says now we can go boldly into the throne room. That access is for anybody who believes. We can go boldly into that throne room. But you got to understand there are moments where Jesus wants to set up his tent in your field. He's going to visit you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to draw closer to you than ever before. And how does that happen? Through the governing of your mind. Through the renewing of your mind, being transformed by the renewing of your mind on what his word says. As we draw close to God, he then draws close to us. You need a healing in your body. You're all in, in, in the spirit. Remember my pen? In the spirit, you're healed. Carrie, you're in the hospital right now. I think you are in the hospital, honey. You're healed. I know you probably can't breathe very well. And I know you're scared. But in up here in the spirit, he paid a price. Govern your mind and bring that healing to your body and manifest it into the natural. It's to what you believe. You're not just claiming it. You're not just faking it till you make it. It's not name it, claim it. It's not, let's, let's quote this. If I quote this long enough, then it has to happen. It's none of that. I don't know where Pentecostals got that from. And shame on them for preaching it for 20,000 years. You have to be transformed by it. Bring it from the spirit. Everything that God has for you is yours right now. Carrie, he's not going to the whipping post for you today. He already did that. He's already been there. He knew 2,000 years ago you would be in that hospital. Kathy would be in the hospital. Stephanie would be in the hospital. And many others, he knew that. And he said, I will make a way of escape. But you're going to have to look up. The Bible says if you look up, he said, your redemption, it draweth nigh. If we draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to us. It's like a magnet. I shared this with you before. If you want to know who Abba is and how he does with you, I want you to get a magnet and I want you to get the, another magnet. You can only get them so close together and eventually without you even trying, they'll go and they'll become one force. But if you have this magnet and you turn this magnet the opposite way, it'll go like that. Join with him. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I want you to take this word. And I want you to understand where we're at prophetically. I've already shared with you where we're at on the Hebrew calendar. And I want you to take this. And I want you to find in your own Bible scriptures about seeking him, about finding him, about healing. Don't take a preacher's word for it. That's why you're in this mess. We have to know the word of God for ourselves. And I'm not down. There's some preachers out there that are preaching truth. They are. But there's a lot that's not. But you may be in a position where your preacher can't be with you right now. And you're going to need to know it for yourself. Let's pray. There's a lot of churches right now that have, I had six pastors to reach out to me today all in the same day. And they're saying to me the same things. Ronna, COVID is hitting our church again. Ronna, this, we, I haven't had one of my meetings to postpone because they, they've decided it wasn't Murchison, it was another church. They've decided that they need to wait. Let me tell you something. We have the authority. Let's bring. There's not a vaccine to take the place of Jesus Christ. 
There's not a political party that takes the place of your relationship with Jesus. There is not a group, a denomination that takes the place. You, God is looking for kingdom-minded people. And God is in his kingdom. He's not outside of it. And if your mind, your heart, your eyes, your ears, and what you say come out your mouth, is anything opposite than the kingdom? The Bible says you're none of his. That's in Romans chapter eight. We, he's not playing games no more. The, he's separating the men from the boys. This ain't about, I've heard people say, Rona, I've been going to church longer than you've been alive. I'm happy for you. That's not what this is about. Well, I'm the daughter of someone proud for you. That's not what this is about. We need to know Jesus and his word for ourselves. We need to understand the season in which we are in. We need to understand spiritually the battle that we're in so that you know how to attack. Because sometimes you're rebuking devil. Sometimes you're praying for healing when you've been afflicted. You need to even know that. You're praying for, you're praying for, uh, healing when you're being afflicted or you're praying for we're praying we feel this we feel this war happening we don't know how to identify it so we, we just start rebuking the devil when we just we simply need to repent you see how it can all get confused so i want i want us to pray we're going to pray for texas we're going to pray for our church, we're going to pray for those that are been in the, let me check my chats right quick. Just a minute. Thank you for my happy birthdays. In Jesus' name, come on, somebody. Will you join with me? I know you're home, and it feels different, doesn't it? But Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are battling in their body. We pray that their faith is stirred right now. I pray over those that are right now are sick with the COVID-19 and any other sickness or disease. There's people out here that are, we have a couple that's battling with blood clots. Father, it doesn't matter the name or the nature of the sickness or disease because your name is above all of these names. And we lift up your name in this situation. And Father, we want to reach out and extend the word of God to these hospitals and to those, our friends and family and our, 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 uh, that are in these hospitals. And Father, we don't say that you just touch and bring healing and manifestation of healing in their bodies, but to the whole floor that they're on. God began to empty the hospitals. Who on here is brave enough to say, let's pray for a supernatural move of God? Who wants to join me in this? You're going to be diligent. And we're going to pray supernatural. Hi, darling. For a move of God that it's going to make the news that they don't know what is happening, but whole entire floors of hospitals are being healed all at the same time. Let's empty the hospital. Let's John G. Lake this thing. Who's with me? John G. Lake it. You know, John G. Lake, he would go into a city and walk in and empty a hospital. In Spokane, Washington, to this day, is still known as the healthiest city in the country because of the ministry of one man. 
One would bring a thousand of life. Two would bring 10,000 of life. Pastor Chris, um, I think you're on here. I don't see everybody, but when I was praying today, I was praying for Pastor Chris. And the Lord wanted me to tell you that the enemy's not going to be able to close your mouth. This is your celebration. And the Lord wanted me to tell you that the prophetic voice in your church is not going to be snuffed out. The Lord said today to tell him it's going to get louder. I heard the Lord say it's going to get louder. In the warfare in which you find yourself in, you will have the victory. Murchison will have the victory. You made a stand to not be afraid. You made a stand. The Lord heard you. It's almost like I, I saw you in the spirit dancing and jumping around. No one else was around. Maybe it was in your office. You began to just jump up and down and dance in the midst of pain and in the midst of what the enemy is trying to see. He's trying to snuff out. But the Lord said to tell him, I'm going to make his prophetic voice louder. In Jesus name. And I, I, I meant to call you and ask you if you would do this, but will you unmute yourself? I wanted you, the Lord, I knew this was going to happen. And I, the, I, the Lord is like the Lord. I saw the Lord say, I want him to unmute and pray and begin to just minister. I know this is, I'm calling you out right now. Will you unmute yourself and begin to pray for us and lead us in some prayer for us and lead us in some prayer for us? Father, we just come to you right now. Is this unmuted? Yes. I think I hit the right button. Am I unmuted? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Just had to make sure. Father, we just come to you right now, Lord. God, you see all the, the, the struggles that are going on, the sicknesses, uh, especially in this area and even in our church. And we just come against the darkness and we push back right now against the darkness that's trying to stop the move of God trying to stop the voice of God that's being sent forth, not only in our area, but Lord, even in our nation. And we come against it right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that every demonic oppression has to push back right now in the name of Jesus. God, I just pray for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon every church, upon every individual. Lord, that's on this Zoom right now. I pray that your supernatural presence would just fill every house, fill every home right now, oh God. Lord, I pray for a revival spirit to sweep out across this nation. It won't just be contained in Texas. It won't just be contained in Murchison or Indiana, but God, it will spread throughout the United States like wildfire, just like the fires that are burning in California. I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost would begin to sweep through this country, oh God. Pull us back into you where we belong. God, that we would turn back to you during this time. Lord, we won't get further away from you, but God, we would draw closer to you. God, I pray that you would touch every person that's in the hospital right now. God, we dispatch your angels to go to those hospitals. Lord, as Sister Rana said a while ago, that entire hospitals would be free of the sickness that they have. It won't just be individuals, but entire floors will see and experience your healing that they won't be able to deny the power of God. And Lord, we pray that you would just move in a mighty way, stir our hearts, oh God, and we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. I saw you today, Pastor Chris, as you opened your mouth to a normal level wider and I knew that the trumpet of your ministry in that surrounding area 
where the enemy is wanting to pause or slow down, the Lord said, no, 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 no. I'm getting ready to increase it because this is your celebration time. This is your celebration time. A, tr a trumpet in the East Texas area. In Jesus' name, I prophesy it right now. I prophesy it. In Jesus' name, Michael Sota, Radarium Dora Labakita. I just keep seeing it over and over. You, this is not the time the enemy cannot close your mouth because the Lord has ex opened it wider. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I give you praise. I come against the spirit. There's somebody on here. You're battling fear. You're battling fear. I come against the spirit of fear on you. I come against the spirit of false doctrine and religion in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of confusion right now in the name of Jesus. It's time to know who he is and who we are in him and take that authority. Don't play games with the enemy. Last night, the last three or four nights, I, I'm waking up at three in the morning. And I go back to bed around seven, eight o'clock, sleep another hour or two, and then get up. In the last two or three nights, I woke up at three and I, I didn't feel anything or see anything. And I, but I just began to pray and seek the Lord on some things. But last night at three, what woke me up is I felt someone come and press on my body while I was asleep. And I knew prophetically it was a spirit of witchcraft. It would just press on me. I opened my eyes and I, I was not afraid. I was not in the mood. And I sat up and I said, you're not welcome here. Very calmly, I was very, I felt more peace. I felt calm and I felt peace. And I said out loud, I said, you're not welcome here. You have no authority here. I don't know what you're thinking, but leave this house. Leave this room. You're not welcome. And I rolled over and ignored whatever it was that went immediately asleep. I don't know how long, maybe 30 minutes later, I felt this pressing again. I sat up in bed. I, then I stood up in my room, my bedroom. And I said, what did I say? You are not tormented. You have no voice here. You have no authority here. Matter of fact, do you not know where the door is? Y'all think this is silly. I was at total peace. I know what the Lord has promised me through his word. There will be no spirit of witchcraft, no spirit of rebellion, no satanic spirit. There will be no opposing spirit of any kind to take this season from me. Not, 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 not this time. So I, I opened my bedroom door and I began to walk through my house. And I went to the front door. I was like, I said, out. Out. You have no place here. You have no voice. You have no authority. I'm going back to sleep. You out. And I went back upstairs. And I thanked God and I worshiped God and I praised the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy, for his love, for his word. Now I went back to sleep. That's what you're going to do. Amen. I love you guys. I will be on here next Monday as well. My next revival coming up. I, my, my, one of my revivals has moved. So we're going to be in Kentucky. I cannot wait to be with you in Kentucky, Mesa, Kentucky. There's a baby that's been born down there. I think she's three months old. And um, her mother wasn't supposed to have her, but God, y'all know I've got babies everywhere. We begin to pray and speak the word. And I get to meet another baby uh, that I cannot wait. Mesa, Kentucky, it says in September. We're going to be there 17th, 18th, and 19th. I'll be home for three days, and then we're flying out to Wichita, Kansas. 
yes, come see me in, in Kentucky. Uh, we'll fly out to Wichita, Kansas. Let me tell you something. Wichita, Kansas. I've been going there every year for the past, I don't know how many years, long time. This church, it's a four square church um, come from out of Amy McPherson's ministry. We have more supernatural things to take place in this church than anywhere I've ever, and it's just, you don't expect it and yet there it is. That's the church where six angels were in the back. Golding was there, Rod Golding was there. And they literally, I told everybody to turn around and I have that church saw them, including, including my mother, which my mother had thought, I never see anything. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to see anything that she turned around there. She could see them. We've had cancer healed. We've we just, it's just, it's just been amazing. And so this keeps growing every year. And there's people who actually take their vacation during this meeting we have had people to come as far as colorado different parts of texas uh, oklahoma other parts of kansas and they don't miss this this uh, revival i'm normally there because there's so many people i'm normally there for like five nights but we're going to be there uh, on the 24th the 25th and the 26th at um foursquare there wichita kansas um, and then in uh, October, we're going to be in, is it Keokuk, Iowa, Church of the Full Gospel, and any of these things, and th there's more coming up, uh, any of these things you can look for on the events on Harrison Ministries International, you can contact us on Harrison Ministries uh, there on our Facebook page or our website, harrisonministries.com. If you want to become a prayer partner with us, be on our prayer team, be sure and let us know, write to us, let us know that you're praying with us. And when we have need um, come up, people need need, we can uh, contact you for that need. I feel like the Lord is going to be speaking to some of you to actually drive uh, to your hospitals and drive around your hospitals and drive in the parking lot and begin to prophesy and declare to clean the hospital out, just do a miracle. Y'all start watching. I believe, I'm going to prophesy this right now before I let you go, that the supernatural things that God is for to do is going to make the news. It's going to make the news. I just feel that. I'm crazy enough to believe that. And I see some of you driving to your hospitals and just driving in the parking lot, stretching forth your hand and opening your mouth and prophesying prophesying. Pastor Chris, when you open your mouth and you begin to prophesy and begin to preach God's word, it'll be to a volume and it'll reach people in which you, I, I, I keep seeing it over and over and over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. It's so good to be with you on a Monday night. Does anybody have anything real quick, because it is late, real quick, that you um, want to say, you can write it to me. Um, you can personal message me. If you ever have a question uh, or if you, there's something that you have always wondered about, I may not know the answer. Maybe one of these other pastors know the answers. But if anything you want to discuss or anything that you question, be sure and contact us. We'll do our best to um, get to you. We're going to be in, um, at Restoring Hope Church it's their seventh anniversary. I'll be preaching there for Pastors Aaron and Amanda, November the 7th. And we'll be in Murchison, Texas um, for New Year's service. That'll be a prophetic night with Pastor Chris and Lisa Wilson. Anybody else? Shar, you good? Everybody's good? I'm going to go ahead and let you go. God bless you. Um, we are praying. If you've, if you've wrote us and you've given us your prayer request, we're going to continue to pray for you. I love you. I will see you very, very soon. Hey, Miss Rana. Yes. <coughs> hey, real quick. Uh, I was going to tell you, do you remember when you was at the church the last time and you prayed for the little boy, uh, he, uh, John and Annie, the Mary Kay lady? Okay. Yeah. Her little son. Yeah. And you prophesied yeah. over him that he would have healing in his hands. Yeah. 
yesterday in service, he come up for prayer and we were praying for him. And John and Annie had been praying for him. And I walked over and I looked at him. I said, did any, I said, John, did you have something on your hands? He said, no. I said, did anybody anoint this boy? They said, no, he had a, I'll call it a blob. That may not be the best word for it, but he had a blob of oil that appeared on the top of his head. Praise God. That's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's already there. We're not, you're not looking for it. We're not already there. Amen. Praise God. I tell you what, I'm excited about if you're in the East Texas area, or if you just decide, hey, I think I'm going to drive a few hours and, and go spend some time at, it's Murchison, Texas. It's between Tyler and Athens. It is, it would be worth it. It would be worth it to go. I look forward to going there. I honestly, sometimes Pastor Chris, I get up here in Indiana and I get to miss in that, that anointing, that glory that's in your house. I'm like, please let Pastor Chris call and invite me to come early because <laughs> I want to be there. But I know it's not because I'm there or not there. The, it's time to celebrate. So thank you for sharing that. There's going to be more and more testimonies from that church, from that area. Are y'all excited? Y'all are all muted. I can't see you. Let me see if I can change this view where I can see, see some of you. There you are. Hi, Pastor Steve. <laughs> Hi, Kimbo. Andrew Goldinger. <laughs> hey, Char. Char is got the ultrasound. She's getting ready to be a grandma. And her son, it's her, it's Cody's birthday. Happy birthday, Cody. And he's a firefighter. Yay, he finally made it to firefighting school. <laughs> I made it. So she's got the firefighter and I've got the police officer. We're good. <laughs> All right, guys, God bless you. I will see you all here on Monday night or somewhere on the road. Somewhere come and join us in any of our meetings. If you if you if you do, please let me know that you're there so I can hug your neck and welcome you there. And uh, be mindful. Be mindful of the spirit of the Lord. This is a season of governing your mental. Take control. Cast all your cares and thoughts upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Bye. Go to bed. Go to bed, y'all. It's late. It's late. It's late in Indiana. All you Texas folks, it's early, but it's late in Indiana. Bye.